Hey everybody on YouTube, Carl Alexander here, and in today's video, we're taking a look at one of my favorite old PC games, No One Lives Forever 2. Let's get into it. No One Lives Forever 2, A Spy in Harm's Way, was released on September 30th, 2002 for Windows PCs. A Mac OS X port was released a year later in 2003. It's the sequel to the game The Operative No One Lives Forever, and was developed by Monolith Productions, who are still making games today. My history with this game and the series in general started sometime during the summer of 2001 when my buddy Kristoff introduced me to the game No One Lives Forever. I played the first few missions and was blown away. At the time I had never played a story driven first person shooter that was anything like Nolf. Since I had Max at home I never got to enjoy games like Half-Life or System Shock 2. I didn't get to build a Windows machine until 2006, so at the time I pretty much just forgot about the series. Sometime in 2003 I went to Software Etc and saw Mac versions of both Nolf 1 and 2 for sale. I had no idea they were even making a port, and was even more surprised to see a sequel. I bought both immediately, and because the first game had already aged quite a bit, I decided to load up No One Lives Forever 2. It's odd now looking at this footage. Even with all the nostalgia I have for this game, it's crazy this seemed to be the pinnacle of graphics to me at the time. I'm assuming I played the game on a CRT with a resolution of 1024 by 768 so it probably looked something like this. At the time I couldn't believe how clear and crisp the 3D was. I was used to blurry textures and blocky weapon models, but the weapon detail in Nolf 2 seemed miles above any other game I had played at the time. It's easy to dismiss this as any other dated PC game. But at least in my experience, it was a huge leap forward. Graphics haven't had the huge generation gaps recently that we've had in the past. Sure, PS4 looks better than PS3, but it's mostly in small details. Resolution, lighting effects, anti-aliasing. Nolf 2 had clear sharp textures, high poly 3D environments, and improved facial animation. Compared to its predecessor, it's night and day. Other parts of the presentation like music and voice acting are great, especially considering the time this was made. The music sounds straight out of a 60s spy movie and fits the game perfectly. I honestly haven't heard many game soundtracks as good as this one. The voice acting, while still being a bit stiff compared to recent games, holds up today and definitely holds up better than most voice acting from the era. So the game has a great presentation, but what really sets No One Lives Forever 2 and the series in general apart is the story. Set in the 1960s, you play as Kate Archer, an agent for a secret international organization known as Unity, whose goal is to maintain world peace. The actual plot of the game is pretty standard for a spy movie, and that's sort of the point. The Russian government is preparing to take over a strategic small island named Kios. Russia invading the island would apparently force an armed nuclear conflict with the United States, so the US pleads with Unity to stop the Soviets and the evil organization Harm from invading the island. So yeah, the plot isn't anything special, but it's the writing and humor that elevate the game. The NPC dialogue and hidden memos and letters offer some great jokes that pay off if you find them all. I'm thinking you need to be more assertive. You don't know this woman. She's dangerous. You work for one of the evilest terrorist organizations on the planet. If anybody in your household is dangerous, my friend, I think it must be you, you know. When you put it like that, the logic suddenly becomes clear. Then there's the main protagonist, Kate Archer. She's a strong, witty, and attractive woman who is living in a man's world and constantly dealing with their incompetence. Originally, Nolf would have had a male lead, and I think it would have hurt the charm the game has. Kate is a relatable character inside the sexist world of the 1960s, and her quick wit and playful dialogue make this game the classic that it is. This is Agent Archer, one of our top undercover operatives. I bet you she is. You ever swallow a lit cigar? The third game in the series, Contract Jack, just didn't cut it. Taking Kate out of the lead role and reducing the amount of humor in the game doomed the series. It's sad that the studio felt a male lead was where the series needed to go. Because if the third game in the series had continued with Kate, who knows, we could still be playing new Nolf games today. And so what about the gameplay? Well, the original No One Lives Forever introduced itself as a stealthy game, but was clunky in its effort. Nolf 2 takes the simple ideas of sneaking around, disabling cameras, hiding bodies, and using gadgets, and makes them more accessible and fun. Nolf 2 isn't complicated to learn, and is forgiving enough to keep the mood light. You don't even have to equip the gadget you need. The game shows an early use of contextual controls we are all used to today. Walking up to a lock to pick doesn't require any fumbling around in the interface. It just works. 
And though that's a small detail, it really improves the experience. If you don't like sneaking around, it's only a requirement for a few levels, so there's always the run and gun technique. But the game really rewards people who take their time and search every desk and file cabinet. Some of the funniest stuff in the game is in the letters scattered around the world. Most levels have a series of jokes that run throughout, which is a nice touch compared to most FPS games that just have you killing endless hordes of enemies through progressively bland levels. The levels in Null 2 range from a forest in Siberia to an underwater lair. The style in each level is somewhat different. For example, Siberia is a semi-open level that lets you complete a few objectives in whatever order you feel like. The India levels are mostly about sneaking around without much combat, and you even get a level that's almost entirely just searching a house for clues. However, even with all the level diversity, the game was still guilty of reusing areas in the form of backtracking which was common for the time and is still somewhat around today. Overall, the gameplay in Nolf isn't anything to write home about, but it's fun. It's got a simple upgrade system that makes things like stealth and combat easier as you progress, but doesn't get in the way by being overly complex. The shooting mechanics and AI are a bit lacking by today's standards, but the streamlined interface and smooth experience make up for its sometimes clunky mechanics. So can you even run this on a modern system? Well, at least on the Windows side, it appears so. If you have the Mac version, you're definitely out of luck on a modern machine. On Windows 10, I had to make a few tweaks with the NVIDIA Profile Inspector, but besides that, the game runs well, and you can even use some anti-aliasing to get rid of all the jaggies. I also used the NVIDIA Inspector to lock the frame rate to 60 FPS, which seemed to run a lot smoother than an unlocked frame rate. The game was only designed to run on 4x3 monitors, so if you want to play in widescreen like you've seen here, there is a community-made patch that was developed several years ago. I'll link all this in the description. Honestly, No One Lives Forever 2 probably won't be impressing anybody who started gaming after its release. Its AI and combat are clunky, and it's got some outdated concepts, but it's a piece of video game history that hopefully won't be forgotten. It's a gem of a game that's sometimes hidden by the more popular titles of its era. Nolf didn't produce any genre-defining features or really have any lasting effect on the industry, and that's too bad. Its humor, in my experience, is one of a kind, and has been refreshing in contrast to all the serious story-driven games of today. Sadly, the current state of its IP is confusing and is making a re-release difficult. Many of the companies involved aren't exactly sure who still owns the rights. The only legitimate way to get a copy of this game is through eBay, and though it doesn't demand big prices, the lack of availability limits its exposure to newer audiences who aren't fans or collectors. And that's a shame. I hope you've enjoyed this look back at one of my favorite PC titles from the early 2000s. If you're a fan of old PC games, then Nolf and Nolf 2 are definitely games you should look into. Okay everybody, that was my video for this week. I hoped you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, I think you know what to do. Uh, leave me a comment in the comment section and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this one in the future. Coming up next week, I've got a review on the VR title Space Pirate Trainer. It's been a pretty cool experience so far, so I hope you stick around for that one, and I'll see you then.